Welcome back to another episode of High Output Juice. In an earlier episode, we had looked at the M12 spot blower. In this episode, we are going to turn our attentions to another air moving tool, the M12 fan, a clamping fan or something like that. Now, in this video, we are going to do two sets of tests. The first set of tests is going to be looking at different batteries. Do different batteries make a performance difference in this tool? We're going to answer the perennial question, do hose blow harder? Here is a high output XC 5.0. Here is a high output CP 2.5. How do they compare to the non high output batteries? Here's an XC 4.0. Here's a CP 3.0. Here's a CP 2.0. And here is another CP 2.0. But this one here is a bit of an older battery maybe about halfway through its working life. Anyways, that's going to be the first set of tests. And in order to evaluate performance, we're going to hook up some test equipment and we're going to monitor voltage. We're going to monitor amperage. Volts times amps gives us power provisioning to the tool. Do these batteries give differing amounts of power? How about performance, real performance? We're going to measure wind speed and we'll see whether there's any difference whatsoever. Now for the second test, what we're going to do is plug in this CP 2.0, this is the smallest capacity battery, and we're going to let her suck it dry and we're going to monitor voyeuristically over time what happens to performance. Does it stay flat and stable and drop off at the end? Does it gradually decline? I don't really know what's going to go on. My guess is it's going to be something not too different than what we found for the spot blower, but this is a lot lower power of a tool. So you don't know until you know. And well, let's find out. And here's our battery of batteries. We got a older 2.0, a brand new 2.0, a good condition 3.0, a fairly new 2.5, a brand new 4, and an almost brand new high output 5. Uh, for our test equipment, we got volts here, we got amps there, and this here is wind speed in miles per hour. Let us begin with this older CP 2.0 battery. I'm going to plug it in. Okay. Now, the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to first of all put it into speed level three and let it stabilize for a minute, and then put it down to speed level two, let it stabilize for another minute, and then put it down to speed number one. And during that entire run, we're going to be monitoring uh, well, all of these uh, all of these variables. Let it begin. Next up, a new two point oh. A good condition 3.0. A nearly new 2.5 high output. A new XC 4.0. And finally, uh, the XC 5.0 high output.
and off. And for this test, we are going to evaluate this older 2.0 battery. I figure it's actually closer to one and a half amp hours. What we're going to do is we're going to stick it into the fan and let her suck it dry. And we're going to evaluate her performance uh, over a discharge cycle. And in it goes. And it lined up and roll. Oh, and she wore that poor little old battery out. And the results are in. Let's start off with battery voltage. My good batteries, they all charged up to a similar voltage well above 12 volts. Only this older battery that I throw into the mix charged up to just barely above 12 volts. Uh, you can look at these battery nominal voltages in my other high output juice videos. It's the same batteries that I'm using. What you'll find is that battery voltage can fluctuate, initial battery voltage, it can fluctuate up and down a little bit. It just is, uh, depends on vagarities of the, of the charging cycle. This battery here is about five years old and I have discharged it uh, quite a few times and you really shouldn't be discharging your batteries all the way or try to avoid it as best you can because uh, it reduces the capacity of the cells inside. Well now let's take a look at uh, how much power these different batteries are able to provide this fan and what we see for all speeds, speed level 1, 2 and 3 that the amount of power provided is similar, very similar, really. In fact, the largest difference between the biggest, bestest battery, this high output XC5, and this old CP2 was only a 9% improvement in watts provided. So yeah, not a lot of difference in so far as uh, power consumption. It's not surprising because it's a it's a low power tool, so uh, the battery type or battery condition is not going to make a huge influence. This difference is even smaller when we take a look at air speed, the amount of air moved by this fan. Now, in this case, the difference between the best battery and the weakest battery is even smaller. It's only 2%. It's not, it's not the same as the amount of power being provided to the tool. It's quite a bit smaller. Now, we had talked about this in an earlier video, and it comes down to the laws of fans. Can you believe that there's fan laws? And there's three of them nonetheless. Now, in this uh, instance, the third fan law is important. And what the third fan law uh, dictates is how much more power is needed by a motor for an increase in airflow. And what the third law dictates is that you need a cubic increase in power for a, for a linear increase in airflow. Basically, what that means is that uh, this fan is relatively insensitive to what sort of battery you're giving it. Uh, don't bother putting your best batteries in, save them for your other tools, and use your older batteries in this tool, because it's not going to make a difference in performance. Let's take a look at the discharge of the CP2 battery, this older one. And uh, what we find is insofar as power provisioning to the tool, this battery starts at around 18 watts of power. However, at the end of the run, about 72 minutes later, just before the battery conked out, power provisioning was down to under 10 watts. So power over discharge is not flat for this fan. And that's not surprising because this fan is a brushed motor and a brushed motor has a fairly simple power regulation circuit. 
unlike a brushless motor, which would be computer controlled, and we might expect a more flat discharge uh, uh, curve there. Yeah, so power declined pretty quickly in the first 10 minutes. Uh, watts declined and then stabilized, but still de declined gradually until the last 10 minutes of the run, and then it declined somewhat quicker. Now, actual performance, wind speed, air speed of this fan in miles per hour, uh, that was a lot flatter. And once again, we have the third law of fans to thank for that. Yeah, so over the discharge cycle, the amount of performance that this fan uh, operates at, it's not a huge difference. In fact, between the start of the run and the end of the run, the difference was only 21%. And the majority of that 21% decline in performance, that happened in the last 10 minutes of the run. So I hope that you enjoyed this look at the performance of this tool, uh, how many watts it consumed, uh, how much wind it puts out. Thanks for watching. Take care, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.